Nick Merriweather, I understand you were an enormous influence in the team curating this exhibition. And so I'd like to hear from your perspective when you're determining, OK, what, what is this about? Is there anything in particular that you want to teach or convince people or help them learn or understand? Or is it more just the tribute to this, this incredible art in the period? There are two big arguments that this exhibition makes. And the first argument, and sort of the fundamental one, is the one that Scott Montgomery really championed and pioneered, which is taking this art seriously as, as a legitimate art movement. And what I really brought to the, the table was looking at it not just from the standpoint of art history, which is Scott's uh, forte, I look at it more from the standpoint of cultural history. And so the two things that probably appealed to me most strongly, I liked the argument of taking it seriously as an art movement, but I'm also interested in the politics of American culture. And one of the things that I think makes this art so successful is the degree to which it really did embody the counterculture. And I think that helps explain its stigma as well. I think because it was so successful at capturing a zeitgeist, at, cap at capturing that counterculture ethos, uh, that's in turn what made it possible to then deprecate it after the heyday of the counterculture passed. Well, that simply makes this art kind of passe. And I think art is always of its time, but it also transcends that time. And I think the interesting thing about putting together this exhibition was seeing the degree to which this art still continues to resonate and speak today. As far as the art itself, and we talked to the art historian, and this is known as the psychedelic art, but what, what are the influences that you see or the other types of artistic styles that, that you can identify in the work? There's a fascinating blend of artists being self-consciously artistic in the sense that they are looking at antecedents. Uh, you know, they're looking at Art Nouveau, uh, which was the first great poster movement in American history. They're very clearly steeped in that, but they're also steeped in a whole host of associated forms. You know, everything from circus posters, which were also part of that era as well. I mean, circus posters, the heyday is from 1890s through the 1930s. Um, they looked at you know every single kind of, every genre and facet of, of poster art and drew upon all of that, as well as a whole host of associated uh, things. So I think it's, it's an interesting testament to the artist's ability to put themselves both in a self-conscious artistic trajectory is also in their own time. And I think the balance between those two is what makes the art such a powerful and evocative uh, cultural expression. What was the counterculture so desperately trying to say? You know, and are, aren't those messages still relevant today? I would say that's perhaps why the interest in this art has never, never waned or abated. And in fact, in many ways, um, if you look at the prices that collectors now routinely pay, you know, they're, there is an entire industry devoted to buying and selling this art. And I think that's a very powerful indication of the degree to which that art continues to resonate. We want to help people realize that some of the attributes of our current lifestyle, we can credit to the 60s counterculture, the Summer of Love era. What would you, what would you point to today that, that sort of proves that that's been effective? The fact that Cannabis is now legal in several states, including California. That would be, I think, one of the most striking things that people would point to. But I think it's a host of, of other things as well. And I would say, in no particular order, I think uh, an awful lot of the triumphs of the counterculture are things that we now quietly take for granted. Uh -huh. But I think that, you know, always, uh, Liberal and progressive values are, are always hard won, and they are things that, it's exactly like you know environmental protection. These are not 
battles that are then are won, and then we can move on from there. There are battles that are constantly having to be fought, and you can never be complacent about those ideals and those ideas. You always have to, they always require their defenders. Could they have known at the time how impactful what they were doing, you know, could possibly have been? There's a wonderful quotation in Hunter S. Thompson's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, uh, where he talks about, and it's, it's really kind of the, the most moving passage of the book, where he says, San Francisco in the 1960s was a special place. And I, I can't do justice to the quote here, but you know, essentially he says, uh, there was a moment where we felt like we were all winning. And I think many people at the time, if you, if you think of 1966 and 67 as being kind of the peak of the counterculture, which in many ways it was, uh, then I think they would have said, no, I think we are winning. I think we are going to prevail and persevere. And I think the sad thing about it is, in many ways they did, but in many ways they didn't. So what do you want people to walk away from here with? A sense that this art is a legitimate artistic movement and that even more to the point, I think it's art that deserves to be taken seriously as art. I think it's uh, an absolutely American art. I think the fact that it was mass produced and widely celebrated and consumed and continues to, to matter today, I think all of those things are not just important, but I think they're also emblematic. I think they, are, they go to the core of who we are as a country and as a nation. And so I would hope that people would leave here thinking this really was an art movement, and it is an art that still continues to matter, and it is an art that is uniquely evocative and informative and powerful. And uh, I hope they leave thinking about, well, I hope there is an echo and a manifestation of this that will happen today. And I look forward to seeing what that might be. Mm, let's bring it on. Yeah. The future's always exciting. Yes, indeed. We appreciate your time, Dick, of course. And so we always Thanks, love Evan. to wrap with a hug. <laughs> Thanks.